Hi guys, this is a painting I produced in Art Rage. I used the roller for the sky and the foreground because I felt that I'd be getting a bit too fussy um, with all that kind of big stuff. So I thought let's keep it really, really, really loose. Let's get into it. So here we are in Art Rage. I'm going straight in with that roller. And as I said uh, in the intro, I am intend to finish the sky with the roller and the foreground, especially the foreground. I always find that I fiddle around with way too much. So I actually sampled the colors off the photograph. A bit naughty, I know. <sighs> Should really have um, picked them myself, but I kind of tried to make it uh, easy for myself. And I also um, used the roller to sort of get in those rough shapes, but I found pretty much straight away that that wasn't going to work uh, for, for what I wanted to do. So I then went in with the uh, regular oil brush to start putting in these um, trees. And I really do like the color scheme of the photo, the very muted soft colors. This photo, in actual fact, I've probably taken an eighth of it out right out the middle of the photo I cropped it massively so there's not a lot of detail in there or anything uh, and the colors are are muted and I like that so I'm going to try and stick with them the best as I can and you can see there that on that little bush right in the center that obviously has got to go because that's just going to draw your eye straight into that and nothing else and uh, another thing I feel that the um, tree, oh, there we go. I put it in, it was a little, that sort of big tree to the right was a little small and that needed going up uh, somewhat. Uh, just to sort of take it into the sky. And if you look at those sort of rough uh, strokes that I made with the roller, that is it that is the sky finished and i don't know if you can see on the video or not but on the actual painting all of the texture of the canvas really shows through and adds a quality to the uh, painting that i i really like so I'm, i was well happy with that well pleased and i'm using the um palette knife to blend out those trees so i kind of got the distant trees in just sort of blending them away and sm smudging them with the odd out uh blending brush or, or palette knife and uh i use a combination of of try squirting paint i quickly give up on that with this one because i felt uh, that it, it didn't need it and i went in with the flat oil brush which gives those nice thick strokes so i've got this real combination throughout the painting of like really sort of terpsy washes it's just sort of dirty brushes putting in that sky and stuff and then these thick brush strokes going in with a thick oil brush which I really like. I think this will print out really nice. And I like I like using the uh, flat brush for doing uh, trees and things. Um, rather than you'd think I'd be going for the round brush to sort of put in a leafy stroke. But I quite like that sort of odd edge flat square or rectangular shape thing going off. So that, again, this isn't a painting about detail, really. This at, at this point, I'm everything's painted on one layer. I've got the um, obviously put the roller in to start with, and then uh, started to paint over that. And um, I, I do add a few more layers shortly, but at the minute, it's all done on this one layer. So strengthening up the trees. If you look at the trees on the left, how dark they are, they're they're sort of way too dark. Um, for, especially if you look at the photo, you can see the grayed out. And I've got them in quite dark. So that's got to be uh, corrected at some point because your eye's just drawn into them. And that's not what we want at all. Now I've created a new layer and I put in a few, few brush strokes just to sort of give the layer the land. 
and I've created a new layer for the cows. So I felt that um, these needed to be put on their own layer just so I could move them around and uh, resize them and scale them and then flatten the layer a bit later on. So carefully sculpted and in these well-defined cows. Not really though. I, I use the eraser a lot to sort of um, just sort of chisel away at the edges just to get the shapes I wanted. I did toy with the idea of duplicating the cows so I didn't have to paint so many. Um, but I didn't do that. I, I did <laughs> that kind of, bit, especially this one here. Look, these, these two cows look pretty much the same. Uh, I, I went. I don't know why I tried. I don't know why I thought using a tube of paint on that to put that white in was a good idea because it wasn't. So I'm just. I mean, they look like dobbed on brushes and. Uh, they're not. I've, I've really looking closely at the shapes of those cows and uh, trying to get something that um, looks like a cow, or you know, gives you the you first glance you think that's a cow. Then when you look closely, you go, oh no, it's not. It's just a a scribble. But um, I I did try to get uh, a light. Um, a likeness and the color I use for the cows I just lifted it off that dark shadow um, pretty much in the center of the painting uh, of, of the uh, what would you call it the barn so uh, I used that color to uh, for the cows because I wanted to keep uh, an even evenness of color and balance throughout the painting and these cows, I, I, when I'd done them, I felt they're way too small. I think it's this one that they're too small. No, I put another one in. I don't paint all the cows, by the way. I think there's just way too many in the photo. And I just uh, pick a few and um, think about very carefully where I'm going to put them um, to get a nice balance within the painting. Kind of said that tongue in cheek, but I did did mean it. I did really think through where they were going to go. You can see I painted this cow on a separate level because I I knew it was too going to be too small. And then by putting it on one le level, I can change the size of it and then move it forward. So you can actually change the kind of the aerial perspective thing, or just the perspective thing, I guess. Uh, by making something smaller you can put it further away making it bigger you can bring it forward so that's kind of what I did and that's all of the uh, cows I wanted in my painting I didn't want any at the edges because that's totally going to take your eye out of the painting and that's not what we're after at all so then I decide that I need a little bit of shadow work underneath the um, cows and the way i chose the color for that i just uh, held the apple pencil on the white of the cows and then on the um color palette i just went down to sort of a, a grade off version not massively just a little bit of that color i've signed it at this point so it must nearly be finished and i still haven't sorted out those trees so it's not finished here we go. At this point, I realized that uh, they weren't right. Usually when I sign something, I have a look at it and think, right, what's right, what's wrong? What else can I do? So, um, you know, I have a break, 10 minutes or so, and then come back to it. And then I felt that, you notice I haven't got those trees in the foreground because I felt that they were going to um, dis detract from the, the the buildings i guess but at, at this point i'm thinking i've just got this rectangle smack bang in the middle of the painting and he's he's just so distracting and not very pleasing to look at so i'm whacking at this point i'm just whacking a few more um branches and twigs in and things just to give the impression impression that it is trees and then i decide to put this um bush or small tree or group of trees in the uh, foreground 
just to break up that rectangular shape which was not not working for me and then i repaint the fence back in this was you know it didn't take long this painting but I re i'm really pleased with it it's just a, a nice simple little sketch really so i'm just sort of going in putting in bits of detail I, I, sort of painting lines under the eaves putting ridge tiles in uh straightening up walls and darkening roofs slightly i just felt that the kind of really light colors on the, on the roofs um again sort of draw your eyes to them which isn't really what we want uh, put in a bit more detail on that sort of uh, roof of the building behind the uh, barn uh, i just felt that could have been anything really a couple more lines leading you in on the foreground there we go and i sort of just darken up that roof a little bit i just felt it was too light not a massive amount but just sort of just to knock it back a little bit putting in tiny bits of detail really i suppose a few more lines in the foreground there maybe beginning to start to overdo it i've got to be careful with that darken up that there was that little sort of light rectangle there which was just way too much put in a bit more shadow on those walls just sort of sharpening up the shapes a little bit i also feel like i need uh, I, I want to put that um telegraph pole in at some point we're gonna have to put that in uh, i don't know if you can see the telegraph pole it's right there we go i'm putting it in now I felt that I, I got to be careful with it because I didn't want it to sort of uh, drag your eye to it. So I could sort of kept it really sort of muted, but it just adds a little bit of depth to it. Painting a few uh, fascia boards in, tidying up that fence. This is nearly the end. Just sort of putting a few highlights on the trees. That's it. I think that just lifts them up a little bit. They're going to need softening off though, I think. Maybe just uh, use the palette knife just to blend them away some. Here we go. Palette knife going in just to, just to knock them back a little bit. Still fiddling with the cows. Can't believe that. few more branches this really was one of those fiddly ones and there we go that is it that is my uh, farm painting I hope you've enjoyed this video if you have big thumbs up as always much appreciated if you're new to the channel please consider subscribing because I've got lots of videos like this and I would love to be sharing them with you. So hopefully, I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!